सो वेलकम 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 टू द रिविजन सेशन ऑफ एस ए थ्री फोर जीरो टू एस ए थ्री फोर जीरो टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स बिगिन द रिविजन विद द नोट दैट वी नोटेड इन द क्लास सी दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड ऑन अश्योरेंस इंगेजमेंट ठीक है नाउ वॉट इज स्पेशल अबाउट दी स्टैंडर्ड ऑन अश्योरेंस इंगेजमेंट दे कवर द अदर टाइप्स ऑफ अश्योरेंस इंगेजमेंट सर अदर टाइप्स मीन्स डू दे कवर ऑडिट द आंसर इज नो audit is covered by standards on auditing do they cover review the answer is no review is covered by sre audit and review are about historical financial information so when you talk about sae they talk about other types of assurance engagement in this we covered this sae 3400 in today's class what was sae 3400 about examination of prospective financial information prospective financial information is not like financial statement this is futuristic when a financial information information when a financial information is futuristic it is based on the assumptions sir assumptions about two things events which can occur in the future when those events occur what will be the actions of the entity sir what are you saying now everyone can have a different view on this yes so this thing is na subjective is nature this thing is subjective in nature and you as a practitioner need to consider the judgment of the management is this point clear yes sir sir can you give us an example of what are the types of prospective financial information yes there are three examples available first of all it is a forecast forecast is the best estimate assumption best estimate assumption about the events which will occur and the entities actions on them this is based on experience for example in the past you have seen that the sales have grown by 5% so in the future also you can make a estimate you can make a assumption that the sales of the entity will continue to grow at 5% this is called what this is called a forecast okay sir what about a projection in case of projection it is not a best estimate assumption it is a hypothetical assumption hypothetical assumption that means something will happen some event will happen and then we will take some action these are some things which are not based on past experience so these are not necessary for example we will raise 5 crore from a bank when we will raise 5 crore this is what a event happening what is the action that the entity will take sir entity will buy a machinery when you buy a machinery another event happens people place order with you people starts bringing the order to you so you started the production now with the production you increase your sales by 20 crore is this thing based on the past experience no sir these are hypothetical assumptions these are hypothetical assumption so there are two types of uh, prospective financial information that is forecast and projection plus the third type can be a mix of both sir what is a mix of both for one year you can prepare a forecast for the next five years after that you can prepare your projections clear clear sir then sir who is responsible for preparing the prospective financial information who is responsible for preparing the financial statement management similarly here the management is responsible what will be the information it will be properly presented disclosed management is responsible what will be the assumptions management is responsible plus how you will come at the forecast how you will arrive at the forecast how you will prepare the prospective financial information that is the methodology basis of the forecast management is responsible so pfi assumptions and basis of forecast for these three things the management is responsible now comes the question of the day what are the duties of the member who is examining the pfi so tell me one thing what is the most important element to be examined here is it the information or the assumption sir it is the assumption it is on the basis of the assumption that we move from the current information to the futuristic information how do you move from current information to futuristic through the assumption so as a practitioner your focus should be on obtaining sufficient and appropriate evidence about the assumption what are the two types of assumptions best estimate assumptions hypothetical assumption so obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence about the assumption that is for the best estimate assumptions that these are not unreasonable 
hypothetical assumptions that they are consistent with the purpose of information. What do you mean by consistent with the purpose of information? Let's say you want a bank loan. Okay, sir. Now, when you are taking a bank loan of 5 crore, how you will invest that loan? From that investment, what will be the retains, returns that will be generated? This is how the information should be prepared. So, it is saying that the hypothetical assumption should be consistent with the purpose of information. That means it should be as per the bank loan only. Got it? Got it, sir. When the assumptions are okay, next step is PFI should be properly prepared on the basis of assumption. Now, you know the assumption. I know the assumption. You know the assumption. I know the assumption. Should the user also know the assumption? Yes. So, the assumption should be properly disclosed. The PFI should be properly presented and the assumption should be disclosed. What are the assumptions? Whether it is the best estimate or hypothetical assumption, they should be properly disclosed. And the last point was what? Based on this point, there was a question also in the notes at the end. Your prospective financial information should be prepared on a consistent basis. Sir, consistent with what? Consistent with the historical financial statements. Like in case of historical financial statement, you apply the Companies Act. You apply the accounting principles. Here also you need to apply proper accounting principles. Please give me an example. When in preparation of historical financial statements, how do you calculate the depreciation? The depreciation is calculated as per Schedule 2, Companies Act 2013. So when you are preparing PFI, can you calculate the depreciation as per Income Tax Act? Come on. Can you calculate the depreciation as per Income Tax Act? The answer is no. Again, you need to calculate the depreciation as per Companies Act 2013. Got it? Got it, sir. Chalo. Can I give my opinion on the PFI, whether PFI is right or not? The answer is no. You cannot give your opinion on PFI. You are not an astrologer. So what can I give my opinion on? You can give your opinion whether the PFI is prepared as per the assumptions. Whatever assumptions are there, whether it is prepared as per that or not. This we learnt at the end of reporting part. Okay, sir. This is what you can give your opinion on. But whether this PFI is correct, whether this PFI is correct, you cannot give this opinion. Clear? Clear, sir. Bob Badia. Now comes the next topic that is precautions. As a practitioner, what are the precautions to be taken before accepting such engagement? Sir, first of all, understand this prospective financial information is prepared for whom? For a bank, for an investor, for whom? What is the intended use? It is a general or limited distribution. These two points are there. Intended use you need to see and whether it is for general and limited distribution. Got it, sir. Then the three points I forgot. Three points I forgot. Are sir, before accepting such engagement, you should have a pen. Pen means P for, P for the period to be covered by PFI, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, 6 years from the date of PFI. Oh, E for the elements to be incorporated in PFI, that is the data and the assumptions and N for nature of the assumption. N for nature of the assumption, nature of the assumption means whether these are best estimate or hypothetical assumption. Easy, easy sir. Then we went to the next topic, that is the matters. Matters affecting the nature, timing and extent of procedure. What was special about this topic, sir? To make it simplify, we divided these points into three areas. Engagement team, management, business. Come on. Engagement team, management and business. What are the two factors about engagement team? Knowledge and experience. Knowledge that you have gained in the previous engagement. Experience of working on similar engagement that is the business, industry and PFI. Okay, sir. Then you talk about management. Is it competent? Competency of the management in preparing the PFI and the judgment by the management. Extent to which the PFI is affected by the management's judgment. And the last point was about the business, stability of the business. More stable the business, less efforts you need to put in to check the information. More stable the business, less efforts you need to put in. Gotcha. Come on. Gotcha. Gotcha, sir. Now we move to the last two topics that is the considerations for presentation and disclosure of PFI. In this consideration just focus on five, five points A, C, D, E. Come on A, C, D, E. B wala point you can just give a read. A for assumptions. 
ए फॉर अकाउंटिंग पॉलिसी Assumption should be properly disclosed. Accounting policy should be properly disclosed. Plus C for change in the accounting policy should be disclosed and the reason for change and effect on PFI. D for what? D for date of PFI should be disclosed and E for the PFI should be informative and should not be misleading. It should not be misleading. Okay? Okay, sir. And the last topic that is important from exam point of view is modification to the report. In case the presentation and disclosure is not proper, qualify or adverse or withdraw. Come on, qualify or adverse or withdraw. If the significant assumptions are unreasonable, that means let's say the growth rate that you took, it is wrong. Is the impact material plus pervasive? Yes, sir. Again, in this case, qualified? No, adverse. In this case, adverse or withdraw. And the last point is, if you are unable to perform the engagement, unable to get the evidence, then disclaim or withdraw. So what is common in all these cases? What is common? Sir, the withdrawal part is common. Okay? Got it, sir. So that's all that you need to focus on in this chapter. The other parts of the topics you can just read from the notes. That's all that you can do and just go through this question. Is this SAE 3400 clear to all of you? Come on. Yes or no? 11 minutes, huh? Just took us 11 minutes to revise all the efforts that we put in for the last 1.5 hours. Clear or not? Clear, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your participation today. Thanks a lot for being so energetic, for being so participative. Have an awesome day ahead. Let's catch up in the next session. Keep going.